Hello everyone, welcome back to All Team Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're gonna be talking about CAD and VIA libraries. And if you've ever come into All Team Designer from another CAD program, you probably know these objects as pad stacks. Now we got a great viewer question about this topic, and so we're gonna answer that in this video today. Let's hop in and get started. So before we get started looking at pad and via templates and pad stacks, let's take a look at that viewer question. Johnny Makers 9560 writes, how can you import the via and pad template library in the design rules? I think in 8017, you were able to import this list and then choose when routing. You gotta have more than just three options when routing and dropping a via. Well, Johnny Makers, you'll be happy to know that you can import pad and via template libraries into Altium Designer, and you don't have to do it in the design rules or in the PCB design rules and constraints editor. You actually do it in its own area in Altium Designer. And I'll show everybody how to do that here in just a moment. But first, I want to run over what are pad stacks or pad and via templates and how are they used in PCB design software. So pad stacks are a very simple concept. They are a model for a hole or a pad where you would place a component. They're also a model for a via or a mounting hole that you would place in the board. They have a very simple idea. In a pad stack, you basically define a type and then you define a hole if it's present and then you would define a pad. Now, of course, with a through hole via or with a uh, plated through hole, you would have a pad definition on layer one, you'd have a pad definition on layer two, and so on and so forth. You have to then define holes and pads together and then combine all of these together to then create a pad stack. So for plated through holes or non-plated through holes, you would then first define a hole, and then from there you would then select a pad, and you combine these together to create your pad stack. Now some PCB design software has a pad stack library, and you can then carry that pad stack library around with you to different projects, or you can have it as a centralized library, then you can pull that data into all of your projects as you create a new project in your PCB design software. And Altium basically works the same way. You can create a library with all this information in it, and then you can install it into your instance of Altium Designer. And when you do that, you can then access that data in your projects, very quickly place standardized pads and vias in your PCB footprints and into your PCB layout. Now, of course, this is the Altium Academy channel, and I may sound a little biased when I say this, but because I first learned to design PCBs using Altium Designer, I never really had to learn about the concept of pad stacks. You don't go around creating a hole and then creating a pad and then combining them together to create a via, for example. You just create the via, right? So that's a lot easier than having to understand what a pad stack is and then create each of these individual elements. So I think that's one of the things that makes Altium Designer really great. However, of course, PCB designers often use other design platforms. For example, they switch a job, they need to use a different design software, or maybe they have one design software they just use for hobby stuff, and then they use Altium Designer for everything else. So I think it pays to understand the concept of pad stacks because you might find that this pad and via library workflow is very beneficial for you. So to understand how that all works, we need to understand a naming convention for pad stacks because PCB design software will automatically assign names to these objects as you create them. Now pad stacks do have a naming convention and to my knowledge, it isn't standardized everywhere. It's essentially just a de facto standard that exists within some of the major CAD programs. But pad stack naming basically has this kind of format where we first start with a designation for the type of pad or type of hole that we're creating. We then have an option for plating. We then define whether it's, for example, a plated hole or a non-plated hole. We then have some hole dimensions. So we'll write this as H dims. And then from there we go to shape. So we wanna specify if something is square or rectangular or circular. And then we have pad dimensions. And then after this, we may put on some optional information, which is 
typically standardized within each CAD program separately. So for the type designation, we can basically have some designations for, for example, mounting hole. We can have a designation for through hole. We could have a designation for surface mount pad. So we would use these letters to designate the type of hole. Then for the plating type, we basically just use P or N. P represents a plated hole, and then N represents a non-plated hole. Now, hole dimensions and pad dimensions are just a number, and you can specify those using either mils or millimeters. It's really up to the discretion of the person who created the pad stack library. And then finally, we have a shape. And the shape can be, for example, R for rectangular, and we could have C for circular, or we could have S for square. And oftentimes R is just used in place of S, and then we specify pad dimensions as an X by Y dimension. So of course, if it's square, you just have the same numbers here for X and Y. So just as an example here, let's consider this pad stack name. Suppose I have a pad stack name V012C024M0. So this is something that you might find inside Altium Designer. This pad stack name basically tells me that this is a via type. It's a 12 mil hole. The pad is circular. This pad has a 24 mil diameter. And then M0 is used inside of Altium Designer to state that the solder mask has zero mil expansion. Basically, it's following whatever the default solder mask expansion rule is in your PCB layout. Now, when you open up the pad and via templates panel in Altium Designer, you will see a bunch of strings or a bunch of entries in that panel that look just like this. And it's the same thing in other CAD platforms. They will have a similar naming scheme that they use to name the different pad stacks that are in a library. So now what I wanna do is jump into Altium Designer. Let's take a look at where you can access all of this information and how you can create and install libraries inside of Altium Designer. So what we're gonna do now is look in Altium Designer at an existing project, and I'm going to show you how to export your existing pad and via definitions into a library that you can use in new projects. Now, of course, you're not required to do this. Of course, if you start a brand new PCB from scratch, you can define the pads and vias directly in the project, and then Altium Designer will set them up automatically. So we'll go through some examples here and I'll show you what you mean. But if you do have some pads and vias that you wanna reuse, you can absolutely do that. Here on screen, I have a quadcopter project that was submitted for a one minute design review, and it was submitted by Hamid Shabani. Thank you very much for sending this in, Hamid. So in this design, you can see here that we have several different via definitions. You can see here we have a bunch of pad definitions as well. And you can find all of those via and pad definitions in two places. The first one is here in the panels. And you can see here that we have an option under panels for pad and via templates. If you click that, it's going to bring up this window or this panel that you see here on the right side. And that shows you all of the pad and via definitions that are used in your design. So for example, if you already have a via that you've created, such as this via right here, and you wanna reuse it, you can just right click hit place, and then place it wherever you want in your PCB, just like I'm doing right now. Now, let's suppose I want to export all of these pads and vias. That's actually found in a different location. To do that, you go over here to the PCB tab and make sure this top drop down is set to pad and via templates. Now from here, you can select specific pad and via templates that you would like to save into a library. So here, I'm just kind of going through selecting some of these randomly. And now that I have some selected, you see there's a button that says save to library. If I just click that, it's going to create a new pad and via library file. And then I can go through and save this. I can edit these. I can import it into a new project. I can do whatever I want with it. Just hit right click and then save and then find a spot to save it on your computer. And now you have a pad and via library that you can reuse in your other projects. This is pretty similar to the functionality in some other CAD tools where you have a pad stack library and you can basically take that pad stack library with you into new projects. And it's really meant to replicate that kind of functionality, especially for folks who may be coming into Altium Designer from other CAD platforms. So now that we've saved this pad and via library file, how do we reuse it in a new project? Well, one thing that you can do is if you go over to your 
pad and via templates panel, you'll see here that there's an option to select different pad and via template libraries. Well, you have to install them first and they basically work a lot like component libraries. And if you remember how the file based component libraries work, you can install those libraries onto your instance of Altium Designer and then you can access all those components from the components panel. This basically follows the same model. You can install a pad and via template library onto your instance of Altium Designer, and then you can access it in any project. So to do this, I click the little three dots up here in the upper right part of the screen, and then I'm going to install from file. Then I need to navigate here over to the path where I have my file. I'm gonna double click on this, and there you go. You can see it's going to install it. When I hit close, you can see here up in the top half of the pad and via templates panel, we have all of those pads that we had selected in this project. So now if I go over here to this other project, we can then insert some of those pads into this project. So this project was also submitted for a one minute design review. This was submitted by Dominic Pluta. And to place any of these pads into this project, all I need to do is just right click on one of them, hit place, and there you go. You can see I can just start placing these pads. Works the same way with vias. If we put any vias in this library, we can then start placing them as well. Now you see here in this dropdown, the pad and via library that we just created now appears in this dropdown list. I can go through and find any of the pad and via libraries that I want and continue to install them and then scroll through this list and then place them into this project as I see fit. Now you see here on screen that there are several pads that we can reuse in this project, but what if I want to pull those pads out of the library and put them into a local instance directly inside this project? What if I want them to appear in the bottom half of this list? Well, the stuff in the bottom half of this list is just from this project. It was created in the project and it only exists in the project. But what I can do is I can right click on one of these pads, click add to internal library, and then you see here if I scroll all the way down, that pad now appears here in the local pad and via library list. So I can add that or copy that into my local library. And then if I, let's say, accidentally delete this library or I reinstall Altium Designer on another computer and then I pull that project into that new installation, I'm still gonna have access to all of those pads and vias because I now assign them to the project and I pulled them out of that library. Now I don't have to carry the library around with me everywhere. Last but not least, how do we get a new item in here to the local pad and via library template? Well, for that, just as an example, let's say we want to create a via. Here, we just need to click a new via into the PCB somewhere. And then if we go into the properties panel and start modifying it, it will then assign that new via to the library. So let's suppose, for example, I want this to be a 15 mil diameter pad with a six mil hole. So that's a pretty small mechanically drilled via. That via is then going to get assigned to the pads and via template library, and then you can reuse it directly from that panel. Now, normally what I do if I want to reuse this via is I just copy it and paste it. So I literally just select the via, hit copy, and then hit paste, and I put it where I need it. However, you don't have to go through and copy and paste because if you look at the PCB pad and via template panel, you'll see where you just created that brand new via. That new via will appear right here in the lower half of the panel. You can then right click and paste and you see here, I've created another copy of that via. And of course, I can just keep clicking and pasting it wherever I need it. Now, so far we've been looking at what happens inside the PCB layout, but what about when you're creating a PCB footprint? You can access the PCB pad and via templates inside of a PCB lib file while you're creating a component footprint. So here I have one of the libraries from Dominic Pluta's project on screen, and here I have the PCB pad and via templates panel brought up. I just right click on any of these entries, click place, and I'll be able to place it wherever I want inside of this footprint. So you can really access these vias and pads anywhere you want as long as you have that library installed in your instance of Altium Designer. Thanks for watching this video, everybody, and thank you for the great viewer question. And of course, everyone is welcome to leave their comments and questions in the comment section. And if you leave a great question, it just might end up in one of these videos. Make sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. We'll see you next time.